These facts are so well recognized, I believe, by world opinion, that I would scarcely need to mention them, were it not that some here have sought to deny them. If there are any outside this hall who still harbor any doubts about what I have just said, if, for instance, the Central People's Government of China or any other of Korea's neighbors still fear that United Nations forces and my country has already, both through its representative on the Security Council and through a speech made only yesterday in England by our Foreign Secretary, Mr. Bevin, appealed to the North Koreans to give up the fighting and to acknowledge the authority of the United Nations. We hope they will respond. But in any event, military victory will leave many problems to be faced. The United Nations could not now, even if it would, escape from the responsibility of actively promoting a settlement of the political future of the country and of setting the Korean people on the road to economic rehabilitation. The resolution, which as you have heard from the rapporteur, was approved in the political committee, is the first step towards carrying out these tasks. That resolution, proposed by eight delegations in the political committee, delegations coming from all parts of the world, improved and completed by the cooperation of many other delegations, approved in most of its clauses by an affirmative vote of over 50 members, was finally passed as a whole by 47 votes for and five against. It is this resolution which I now commend to the General Assembly. Its purpose and objective. Indeed, I know that all the contributing powers will hope that the period will be short before the objectives are attained, so that the troops may go home. But to let the United Nations forces go before their task is done would be a cynical renunciation of our collective responsibility. The instrument through which the resolution proposes that the United Nations influence should be exercised will be a United Nations Commission. You have already before you the names of six member states who have signified their willingness to serve upon the Commission and whose names are put forward to this assembly by the political committee. Australia, Chile, the Netherlands, Pakistan, the Philippines, and Turkey. I now have the honor to propose that a seventh name be added, the name of Thailand, whose government would, I understand, also be prepared to serve should the General Assembly extend an invitation to her to do so. The General Assembly will see that the membership of it